Hi, my name is Evan Archella, and I'm going to walk you through some tips and tricks for Microsoft Outlook 2010. This uh, particular demonstration is for those of you who are upgrading to Outlook 2010 from Outlook 2003. You're going to see some features today and some capabilities that are new to Outlook 2010, but also uh, things that you may have missed in Outlook 2007, being that you're upgrading uh, from the 2003 version straight through to Outlook 2010. We're going to look at the presentation today across uh, a few key areas. We're going to talk about bringing your ideas to life. I'm going to show you some ways to create some more uh, compelling email content uh, with images and uh, diagrams, being able to take advantage of the new uh, Outlook interface for uh, styles, formatting, other types of things like that as it relates to your email communication. We're also going to talk about working together more effectively as it relates to uh, working in uh, email conversations, working within your calendar, and we'll also look at anywhere access to your work. And we'll talk about uh, not only using Outlook on the desktop, but also being able to use the Outlook web application in the browser, as well as being able to synchronize down to a mobile device. So we'll look at these things throughout the course of the demonstration today. Again, this is mostly targeted to those of you up upgrading from the Outlook 2003 product. Uh, this is uh, Outlook 2010. Uh, if you're coming to this and looking at this for the first time, you're going to see it looks quite a bit different than what you might be used to. At the top here, you'll see that you have what we call the ribbon and uh, the command tabs. Now, the ribbon uh, was introduced in Office 2007, but within the Outlook environment, it was only in the actual message views or if you opened up a calendar item or a contact, but it wasn't actually in what I would call the main Outlook console here, but you can see now this has been upgraded to include the full capabilities of that ribbon. The ribbon is uh, a way to organize or structure commands within the environment here according to what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And within each of these tabs, you're going to find groups of commands and then commands that are relevant to that particular action. So, for example, here in the console, I can click on the send and receive tab to govern uh, how I might send and receive different email accounts that I have within the system here. Uh, the folder tab, for example is how you might want to manage your Outlook folders or even create new folders. You can see I can click a command straight here within the context of the ribbon. Let's just call this folder proposals for example. Click OK and I've now created a folder using a command that was available to me within the ribbon. Go back over to the Home tab for a second. Uh, I want to point out one of the command groups here in particular. It's called Quick Steps. Quick Steps, uh, you'll see right over here, right in the middle of that Home tab. Uh, this is a group of commands that are essentially shortcut commands that allow you to take quick action on, on items that are uh, within your inbox in this case. Um, you can uh, use these as is. You can customize them. You can create new Quick Steps as well. I'm going to show you kind of a couple of ways to think about about that. Um, for example, let's say I had an email that came in and you can see this first one here is about a proposal for one of our accounts. Well, I want to move that over to that proposals folder that I just created. So I'm going to hit the move to quick step. And the first time I click it, it's going to allow me to define that particular step. So I'm going to choose the proposals folder. And when I save that, you'll notice now that I have a proposals quick step. So anytime I get a message that's related to proposals, I can just simply hit the quick step and it moves it directly over to that folder. So you can see it's moved here. I didn't have to drag and drop or anything. I just simply hit the quick step for proposals and it moved over directly into that new folder. Uh, other quick steps, you can mark items as complete. Uh, team email, it'll look at your exchange uh, address book and fire up an email of those peers that are listed for you within the Active Directory. Uh, same thing with your manager. Uh, replying and deleting is a nice one. You can reply to a message and get rid of the original uh, and in the same step. So a number of ways to think about these. Um, you also have the opportunity of creating new quick steps. So if I just show you some of the actions that are available here, you'll see that you have a number of different things that you can automate using the process of quick steps. And that's a new group on the home tab of the Outlook 2010 interface. Let's uh, look at this a little bit differently. Here I'm going to go into the drafts folder. 
and open up a message that I have here within drafts. I want to show you how the ribbon kind of comes across uh, this environment here as well. And you'll find, you know, an insert tab, uh, format text is the one I'm going to show you here where you have some more detailed and richer formatting options that you may want to take advantage of. Uh, as you work through Office uh, 2010 and Outlook 2010, you're going to see not only the ribbon and the tabs, but you're also going to see things that we call galleries. Uh, galleries, this is a styles gallery. You may have seen this in Word. Styles are basically predefined formatting. So rather than have to manually format something, you can use a style to apply certain characteristics uh, with just basically one click. The nice thing about a gallery is you are able to see uh, within the gallery visually what a particular style will look like and you also have something we call live preview so for example if I was to hover over one of these styles if you look at the body of my email message you'll see as I hover that that style is shown to me in the context of my email as it would appear if I was actually to select that particular style. Now this is the first line of text in my email message so I'm probably looking to do a uh, title style so that's the one that I'm going to click here. Uh, also want to look at uh, the second line of text here. Let's go ahead and drop this down and put in a subtitle style. So you can see it's a couple of clicks and I've already kind of started to mark up and, and format that in a much richer way, much faster than I might be able to otherwise. Let me show you here on this chart. If I click this, I'm going to notice some chart tools show up at the top here, design and layout and format. This is what we call a contextual ribbon tab. That means it only shows up in the context in which I actually need to use it. So if I didn't have a chart in this document or if I wasn't actively selecting that chart and working on it, I wouldn't see the chart tools. They would be hidden from view because I don't need them at that time and there's no reason to distract me or confuse me with other tabs or commands that I might want to take advantage of. So as I click off of that chart, you'll notice that that contextual uh, ribbon tab disappears as well. Now you can see the commands here within the ribbon. Sometimes you may not exactly find what it is you're looking for at that particular time. Uh, these little arrows that you see at the bottom right of some of these groups, that's called a dialog box launcher. And the reason it's called that is if you click it, you will see your old uh, uh, interface uh, dialog boxes here. So if you're used to working in dialog boxes, you want to get down and, and kind of tweak some more of the advanced settings here, you can do that by just simply opening up the familiar looking dialog box and begin to make those adjustments. Uh, also, let me just point out for you a couple of other things here. This is called the Quick Access Toolbar. This is where you're going to find all of those things that you access frequently, like save and undo and redo. The nice thing about this is it can be customized. So, for example, if I drop down this drop down, I've added spelling and grammar to this Quick Access Toolbar. You can add other things here as well. You can go into more commands and pick other things you may want to put on here. You also have the ability within uh, 2010 to customize the ribbon itself. So, if you want to add add uh, your own custom tabs and your own custom groups of commands to those tabs, you can do that as well by going into the uh, uh, options view of Outlook and uh, making some of those adjustments. Let me go ahead and uh, close this. I'm going to save this email message here. We're going to come back to it uh, a little bit later within the demonstration. Let me show you something else we call Backstage View. Uh, you'll notice a file tab here right below. Here's the quick access toolbar in the console. Hit the uh, file tab and you'll notice here in backstage view all of those account management settings that you're used to looking for within like an options panel or an options dialog within previous versions of uh, Outlook. What you'll have here is the ability to adjust your account settings for example add additional accounts you can have more than one exchange account uh, in Outlook 2010 with Exchange 2010 and uh, you also have automatic replies so this is your out of office assistant. You can turn it on from here. You can actually schedule it to come on and off at a specific time. And you can also create a separate message for external uh, recipients. So if you want to say something differently inside the organization versus outside the organization about uh, your reasons for being out of the office or maybe including different types of contact information, you can do that here as well. You'll notice on the uh, open tab here, this is where your import capabilities are, data files, uh, other things that you want to do here. And also on the print 
tab, you have a combined view of your print options plus a print preview in the right hand side there. So you kind of get everything pulled into one view. Uh, makes it easier to be able to print and work with that type of information. Uh, right below that you'll see help. If you're new to this, as most of you probably are coming from Office uh, 2003, you may want to go into the Getting Started area, which will take you out to the Microsoft Office website. And here you'll see Find Commands in Office 2010. If you go to that, you'll take you to a page where you can browse through the interactive guides for these products. Interactive guides will basically give you a virtual environment with which to click around in Office 2003 in the interface and it will actually roll over and show you where those commands live now within Office 2010. So it's a very uh, very powerful set of tools that will help you to get up to speed on how to work within this uh, within this new environment. Close out of my browser and uh, let's go back over here to the inbox for a few minutes. I want to talk about to bringing our ideas uh, to life here within Outlook and I'm um, going to kind of lead into this a little bit as we start to work on an email message. First of all, I want to talk for a second about the new search tools. You'll notice a search field up here at the top. If I click that search field, you'll see a contextual command tab for search. And This is going to have a lot of capabilities for you in terms of being able to find what it is that you're looking for within your inbox. So I'm going to just do a search for the word sales and you can see here that I have uh, different emails now available to me as it relates to sales. Well, what if I'm looking for one that has an attachment in particular? You can see up here in the ribbon I have a command for has attachments. Let's click it. I can further refine that information so that these are emails that are have the keyword sales, but they also have attachments. You can use these search tools to refine and be able to find what it is that you're looking for fairly quickly. I also want to show you here, you can see I have an Excel sheet attached. That's the attachment here. Uh, Office has built in uh, viewers within Outlook 2010, which allows you to preview those attachments within the context of the reading pane. So if you simply click, single click that attachment, it'll go into a preview view and you can actually see what's inside that attachment from here. If you click on message, you will return to the traditional message view of that attachment. Let me click the X here and clear out that uh, search result. And I want to talk about a couple of things here. So. Uh, this is related to sales and she's asking me about the, the quarterly review that I'm supposed to be putting together. So a couple things that I want to do here. First of all, you can see these two icons right here to the right of the message. This is categories, this is tasks. We're going to talk about both of those here. Categories, if I was to right click this button here, you'll see I have a number of different categories that I could choose from. Now colored category, these have been customized. and I'm going to show you that here in just a second. But this is really just a subjective way for you to be able to relate information to each other. So for example, you can see here for me, orange is sales. So whenever I see orange in my inbox or my calendar, I know it somehow relates to sales because I'm starting to categorize it visually for myself. Now if I go to all categories here, what I'd like to do actually is create a new category. So let's create a category for Asia Pacific region here. We call it APAC. And I'm going to select a color and I've now given myself a new category that relates specifically to sales from this region. Now I'm going to click sales here as well. So I've checked actually both categories. Click OK and you will now see that I've categorized that message. You can see it up here across the top as well. Now you can search and filter on these categories. They're easy to find later on. But it helps me subjectively to be able to get a sense of, of what this information relates to. Now that doesn't necessarily help me though if this is something I need to take action on. And in this case, you know, she's asking me to uh, uh, when can she expect the quarterly review, which I, I'm still working on. So I need to go ahead and get that finished. So I'm going to right click the task flag here and you'll notice that I have a number of options I can choose from. I can do it today or tomorrow or put a custom date on it uh, and set that information here within the context of the inbox. What I'm actually going to do here is just click this for today. We're going to go ahead and take care of it right now. And I want you to notice this has been flagged for follow-up. And if I go down here to tasks in the bottom left-hand corner, you're also going to see that that has been flagged as an email within my tasks folder. So notice here it's got a little email icon that tells me it's an email task. And it's here in my to-do list and it gives me something now that I can take action on within the context of Outlook. Now it doesn't stop here with your tasks list. If you go over to your calendar, 
You can see over here that I have APAC sales beneath our tasks list here for that specific day. The advantage of having a daily tasks view below your calendar is that you can now actually take a task and just simply drag it up and drop it on the calendar. When you drop it on the calendar, it's now there for you and it's you've given yourself time to be able to work on that information. On the mail view, I'll also show you what we have called the to-do bar. You'll see it on the right hand side here. If I just click this, it'll expand it out. You can see your upcoming meetings, uh, your upcoming tasks, and you can see there's that task for sales, and there's the one I just dragged and dropped onto my calendar. So I know that that's something I need to deal with that's coming up uh, very soon, and this gives me that all-up view of it without having to flip back and forth between all of the different areas of Outlook. All right, so let's work on this. This is something I need to put together, and I've already started it over here in my drafts folder. So let's go ahead and open this up. And we did a little bit of styles and formatting earlier. What we're going to do now is talk about really bringing our ideas to life here with a number of different capabilities that we can incorporate into this message so that it's more than just text. So let's go down. Uh, I'm going to scroll down below our chart here. And what I'd like to do in this area here is insert what we call a smart art diagram. Now, if you look at these lists of success here, product, service, value, these are all the things that are important to us. That's what's going to determine whether or not we're successful. Now, it works as a bulleted list. That's fine. Your bullets are very easy to read. But I might want to demonstrate this a little bit more visually for the readers of this particular message. So I'm going to click the Insert tab because what I want to do is actually insert a piece of smart art. Now, SmartArt is a diagramming capability, and if I just click, let's say, Relationship, for example, and I really like this funnel, just kind of is a good representation of putting ideas in and getting a result out of uh, the other side, so let's click OK. And you can see now I've got a diagram here. It put it in automatically. I didn't have to you know, manually create this using uh, different types of shapes, though the shape tools are still available for me if, uh, if I need them. What I'm going to do here is go ahead and just start typing in these bullets again. So let's put in our products and our service and our value and our success. Okay, so now I've added that. You can see that the smart art is now a, a, a encompassing that information. What I want to do now is come up here to my contextual tab for my smart art. I'm going to make this a little bit more colorful here, and I'm also going to uh, add a 3D style to it so you can get a sense of uh, a, a little bit more depth on that particular. Uh, diagram. So now I've got a way to demonstrate that information very visually in a way that those bullets just don't don't quite convey. Let's uh, go down and look at some other things here. Uh, here I have an image within the context of this email message. We're talking about our market challenges here and we just kind of select this image. Uh, we have uh, an international market at this particular company and uh, that's what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that we have some, some challenges with, with our overseas uh, uh, market. This is a picture of Prague and anybody who has seen pictures of Prague will probably identify this as that city. I, I want to be a little bit more generic with this. So what I'm going to do is crop it down. You can see I have picture tools across the top here. A uh, number of ways that I can can deal with this particular image. I'm going to crop it first. So what I want to do here is actually uh, just drag it down uh, and resize it a little bit there by taking out the extraneous uh, information within the photograph. So let's just go ahead and crop it out. Now I've taken out kind of one of the landmarks of Prague. So what you see here now are just some international looking buildings. You can kind of get a sense that uh, this is a, a more generic representation of our particular market that we're uh, talking about. What I also want to show you here is in the picture styles area, just as we had predefined formatting for text, we have predefined formatting uh, for images. So you can see some styles here as the different ways that I might want to portray this uh, image. I like the one here that kind of looks like a, a Polaroid that you might have uh, thrown out on your desk or on a table. It's got that kind of tilt to it and, and shadowing. Um, a number of different options that you can definitely choose from as you're working uh, within these images. Let's go ahead and save this. 
and uh, close this message. So I've, I've, I'm making some headway there. We've got our nice chart, add some a smart art diagram, uh, an image uh, to it as well. And so you can see you can begin to make that communication much, much more visual uh, and much more powerful than just basically a, a text-based uh, communication. Let's look at a couple of other things here as it relates um, uh, to working with uh, other people, working more effectively together. Um, want to talk about conversations so we've all had these you know strings of email coming at us different message conversations that we're having to deal with and you know what sometimes we don't really need to be on those conversations and you can see here uh, you know our company is starting an annual flag football team and somebody's replying all to this thing and nobody you know I'm not interested I really don't want to keep getting uh, these emails well this is a conversation you can see the header across the top uh, conversation view is, is usually on by default so you're showing these items as conversations uh, one advantage to that is if you wanted to delete all these emails at once you could delete the header and just kind of get rid of everything within the conversation um, there are some cleanup tools that you can use to clean up the conversation uh, it will delete kind of redundant messages and just kind of really streamline threads that go on over a long period of time uh, in the case of this message I want to ignore it actually because I'm not interested in flag football and everybody keeps replying all to this message so when I ignore it I can ignore the conversation it's basically going to take the whole conversation move it over to the deleted items and any messages that come in in the future that are related to that conversation guess where they're gonna go straight into the deleted items so I don't have to keep to keep uh, cleaning up that information over and over and over again I can just do it once ignore the conversation and route everything over uh, going forward let's take a look at a couple of other elements here of this we talk about working uh, with other people communicating with other people at the bottom of this email message I want you to see the Outlook social connector so at the bottom of your reading pane you're gonna see the social connector and if you click and expand it up uh, what you see here is basically all the connection points you have with individuals so I can see other emails from this person attachments meetings that we uh, might have and you also have the opportunity here of connecting this to your social networking sites so if you have a Facebook account or a LinkedIn account or if you have a, a my site on your SharePoint site you can connect those things up so that that information is also pulled through the uh, social connector for the people that you're working with and you also can just simply tuck that social connector back down toward the bottom of the reading pane. Let's take a look at our calendar. A lot of times working together starts over here in our calendar. And you may want to share your calendar with somebody else so that you can have the opportunity to look at each other's schedules. If you click share calendar there at the top, it'll open up what we call a sharing request. Now this is powered by Microsoft Exchange Server. And what I'm going to do here is actually just put in someone's name that I want to share with. So we're going to look at uh, Molly Clark. Now Molly was the one I was just looking at her social connector and she wanted to get together and talk about some things so in order to do that I think it helps if we can see each other's calendars and uh, be able to work uh, a little bit more closely together. Now I'm going to request permission to view her calendar at the same time so we can hopefully get connected very quickly across each other's calendars. When I send this uh, you'll notice we can decide you know, what type of availability we want to use here as well and uh, I'm just going to send this out and as I go back over to my inbox you can see that Molly accepted my request and I have a link now also to open her calendar so she's allowed me to see her calendar when I click open this calendar it's going to take me back into my calendar view you'll see Molly now appears here under my shared calendars and it opens our schedules side by side so we can actually look at each other's information and if I click the overlay button here I can actually lay our calendars on top and be able to kind of see exactly how our day stacks up uh, against each calendar and you can simply break those back apart again as well now if I add additional calendars here so let's bring in Kim let's uh, bring in Sanjay maybe that's my team now you'll also notice in certain exchange deployments that you have a team calendar set up here that when you click it it just brings on everybody that's uh, within your team so you have the opportunity of doing that as well uh, within the context of of uh, your exchange server deployment it kind of depends on the the global address list configuration there um, now 
yeah, I can see these all side by side, right? We could do the, the overlay that we talked about. Uh, but we also have a new view in Outlook 2010 called Schedule View, and it's right up here at the top. If I hit Schedule View, it'll actually kind of lay those out horizontally, and we can get a good sense of, of what everybody's uh, availability is for having a meeting. And if I click uh, New Meeting up here at the top, you'll see there's an option for New Meeting with All. and It will basically open a request, pre-populate it with everybody whose calendar that I'm viewing here, and that just kind of helps to take a, a couple of steps out of the process of taking uh, uh, of setting up those meetings. Now, uh, other meetings that you have set up, uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, you can see there's everybody uh, within the context of that meeting uh, request. I did new meeting with all, uh, but you also have an ability once you've set up that meeting. If you come back in, like here's another meeting I have for budget planning. If I open that meeting, now that that meeting's been set up you'll notice this OneNote button here at the top. If I hit that, it's going to ask me to pick a uh, notebook and a, a page of a uh, section of notes within my Microsoft OneNote uh, application to link that meeting to. So you'll notice here if I open this up, I'm now in Microsoft OneNote 2010. OneNote is a digital note-taking application, and it's part of the Microsoft Office 2010 uh, family of products. And what you'll see here is all of the information from our meeting request has been brought through, including all the online information here, and a link back to the Outlook item. So if I was within my notes, I can start taking notes on this meeting. It'll link me back and forth from here back over into uh, the actual appointment itself and be able to open that straight up. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of other things as it relates uh, uh, to working with other people. And this kind of ties us into the idea of anywhere access uh, to our work. Um, what I've showed you here kind of is something we would be doing together. We're on the same uh, exchange server. Uh, we're able to schedule meetings, see each other's availability within the context of, of Outlook. Uh, and we're all kind of pulling off that same server information. Now, if you need to share your calendar with somebody that's not on your server, you can do that. You can do it by way of emailing your calendar. And you'll see an item up here for email calendar. It's right next to that share calendar option we talked about earlier. Uh, emailing a calendar will allow you to basically select how much you want to show. So let's do the next seven days, for example. And again, how much of your availability do you want to show? So in this case, let's do limited uh, details. When I click OK, what you're going to see here is an emailed version of my calendar. You can see all my uh, availability here, free busy over the next seven days. And I could email this to anybody I needed to. They would be able to see this information. And this snapshot is going to also be an attachment uh, in the message body. So as they pull that over, uh, they can open the snapshot in Outlook and they can actually bring it down and they can display the snapshot uh, side by side with their own calendar. So they can basically uh, look at this with their own information uh, even though they're not on the same Exchange server that I am. I also, in terms of anywhere access uh, to my work, uh, have access to Outlook information in other places. So let's go back into the Backstage view here by clicking the File tab. And you'll notice here that my Outlook web app link is right here with, for me within the account settings. So if I click that, it will take me to Outlook in the browser, which we call Outlook web app. And you can see here the goal is to have an experience in the browser that's as much like that desktop experience as possible. So from here, I'm able to look at my inbox information. I'm able to go into my calendar, schedule meetings and appointments, uh, you know, govern my contacts here, uh, as well as that list of tasks as well. I can do all of this within the context of the browser. I also have an options area up here where if I go into my options, I can uh, look at my uh, mailbox capacities. I can turn my out, out of office on or off, change my password, do a number of other things here within the context of the browser so that I'm, I'm really able to stay productive, stay focused, whether or not I'm, I'm on my desktop version, uh, my laptop, my browser, uh, and of course within your mobile device, uh, being able to make a connection. If your device supports Active Sync, if it's a Windows phone or another device that supports Active Sync, you can make that connection to Exchange and get that full experience. Uh, all those connection points with your calendar and contacts all brought down to that mobile device. 
So, in summary, um, we've looked at several things today for Outlook 2010. Um, I showed you how you can start to bring your ideas to life, not only with the new user interface making it easier to get access to a lot of these commands and capabilities, but also being able to take email communication uh, and make it more than text. Bring in images, bring in diagrams, really communicate yourself in the richest, uh, best possible way. We talked about working together more effectively, how we govern these conversation threads that we're uh, engaged in, how we use our calendar, things like schedule view to be able to uh, more effectively look at each other's schedules and get together for uh, uh, those types of, of collaborative or meeting scenarios that we need to get our job done. And in terms of anywhere access uh, to our work, being able to email our calendar to somebody that's not on uh, our Exchange server, Outlook web app, uh, mobile devices using Outlook Mobile 2010 or connecting other active sync enabled devices. Uh, to the exchange server and being able to pull down all of that information so you're always connected and always up to date. Uh, some links here for you. What you'll notice, uh, the Office 2010 getting started. This is the same page I showed you earlier. We talked about getting started, uh, the interactive guides, all of that. This is like a direct link to that information. Uh, the Office uh, page, the Outlook page is going to have top 10 features and things like that available for you as well. And uh, if you'd like to know more about the Office web apps, which are the browser-based versions of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote, uh, office.microsoft.com slash web apps is a good place for that, as well as the Office mobile homepage. Uh, I hope this was a valuable session for you, that uh, you have some tools that you can use to get started using the new Outlook 2010. And uh, we wish you the best experience with Outlook 2010. Thank you.